Hi and welcome to my OCRA A Level Biology Revision session with me Christine. So today's lesson I want to look at skeletal muscles. So what are muscles then? We know that muscles are organs, we know that they are made up of muscle tissue and we know that a cell in the muscle is actually called a muscle fibre. So we because we know the muscle fiber is a cell, we know that it has a plasma membrane. Now we don't call it a plasma membrane, we call it the sarcolemma. So when we're looking at the muscle fiber, the sarcolemma is the membrane which is surrounding the muscle fiber. Now within each muscle fiber are many cylindrical structures called myofibrils. Now a myofibril is basically an organelle which is made up of proteins. Now inside the myofibrils are what's known as contractile sarcomeres. They are what shorten so that the muscle can contract. Now around these myofibrils is a structure which we know as the sarcoplasmic reticulum. It's the smooth endoplasmic reticulum but because we're talking about it inside the muscle cell it's a sarcoplasmic reticulum. And this is important because the sarcoplasmic reticulum contains calcium ions. And that will become important when we look at how the muscles actually contract. So if they were to give you an electron micrograph just to identify when we're looking at the muscle fibers, we're looking at the cell. When we look at the myofibrils, we're looking at these red dots. Well, these red dots would be identifiable with the section V, which is highlighted on this picture. So when they give you an electron micrograph, they do expect you to note some key distinguishing features. So these really long cylindrical organelles run all the way down through the muscle fiber. Now it's important that we note here that they've given a, a bit of information where they've talked about glycogen granules. So this is where we look at our hormonal system and we've talked about insulin and how insulin ensures that our blood sugar levels are controlled by signaling to muscle cells to remove excess glucose and to store them in the form of glycogen inside the cell. So we can see that we have in this picture been given some information about glycogen granules. So that is identifying whether you can see that the muscles will need to have a store of glucose in the form of glycogen. So if we actually looked inside the myofibril then, we know that it's made up of proteins. Well, there's two proteins you need to know. Specifically, one is known as the thick filament. Now, the thick filament is composed of a protein called myosin. Now, myosin is really important because it is a rod-like structure. So each molecule has this rod-like structure, which we call the tail. That forms what's known as the core. That's what makes it a thick filament. What it also has is this bulbous head that projects out to one side. Now, it actually comes out at both sides, but the head will only come out on one side. But remember, we have lots of these protein fibers and they are lots of projections coming out. So it actually comes out in both sides, although I've only shown it in one side here. Now, one thing to know inside the head is a specific region called the actin binding site. Now, that means that it is complementary to the actin molecule and this is where it's going to bind with the actin. Another distinguishing feature is that it has an ATP binding site which we will need to discuss later on and also that there's a hinge. Now this hinge allows the head to tilt forwards and backwards which is really important when we look at the sliding filament theory. Now the other part of the myofibril is actually the thin filament. Now the thin filament is made up from actin and the actin is two long chains which are twisted around each other. Now what we need to understand is the thin filament doesn't just have actin, it actually has two other structures to it. It has a protein which is known, known as troponin. Now the troponin molecule is very important because the troponin molecule will change shape when calcium ions bind to it. Remember I mentioned calcium ions being held in the sarcoplasmic reticulum? So this is where they link 
to the acting and how the muscle contracts. But I am going to do a whole video on the sliding filament theory, so do check that one out. But it's important that we note we have our troponin molecule and we also have tropomyosin. So the troponin molecule is actually attached to the tropomyosin mo molecule and the tropomyosin molecule is a really long, thin molecule that wraps itself around the chain of actin, blocking the myosin. So when the muscle is relaxed, the tropomyosin actually blocks the myosin from attaching to the actin. So it's important that you note that that tropomyosin has a very specific role to play in a, the relaxation of a muscle. It's going to block the myosin from binding to the actin, blocking it from forming cross bridges. When we talk about contracting muscles, what's going to happen is the tropomyosin is going to be moved into the groove of the actin. This therefore exposes the actin and the myosin so that they can now form cross bridges. So this is important to note with the troponin being able to change its shape. So what does it actually look like when we look inside? Well, we have these contractile units which are called sarcomeres and they go from the Z line to the Z line and then we have this M line. So it's important that we know that a sarcomere is a Z line to a Z line and in the middle is the M line and we go all the way along, we have these contractile units in a big long row. Well, what is actually attached to the Z line and what's attached to the M line? This is the important part. So that thin filament is actually attached to the Z line and the thick filament is attached to the M line. So what we have is actin and myosin attached to very specific anchor points. Now what then happens is, when we look at this electron micrograph, we can clearly see where our Z line is and where our M line is because they have a very distinct structure. So when you're looking at the sarcomere, which is what's shown in this picture here, for example, what is the label of X to Y, that is a sarcomere. So that's showing you from one Z line to the other. So what does it actually mean then when we talk about muscle contractions and these sarcomeres, these contractile subunits? Well, what we have is we have what's known as this area, the light band or the I band, which is only made up of actin that thin filament. Because it's only got the thin filament, it appears light in an electron micrograph. If we then look at the myosin region, that thick filament, that's known as the dark or A band. That is where there's myosin with a little bit of overlap of actin. So it, at the end, it'll be darker because of that overlap. So what we can see is when a muscle actually contracts, what's going to happen to each of the sarcomeres is that they're actually going to get shorter. That's because the dark band is not changing, that thick filament is anchored. What's actually happening is that the actin, the thin filament, is actually being pulled towards the M line. So we say that the filaments are sliding over each other and therefore our light band has got shorter but our dark band doesn't change shape. So I hope you've liked this video and if you have then please do click on the like button and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you haven't already done so, please check out www.aiqchat.com. It's my revision platform to help you to revise.